everyone. I'm Vetri and uh, I'm part of the sports school. So firstly, I would like to welcome all, all the participants and the panelists for this session. And I would also like to extend my warm welcome to the members of the media who have joined us today. Uh, we will be opening up the session for the media interaction in the midway. So, and I would request all the participants to switch off their camera and mute them uh, until their uh, the Q&A session is open for the participants. So now I would like to hand it over to the hosts, Srihari and Vikit to start off the session. Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. So uh, I'm Likit and this is my co-host Srihari, as you can all see. And Hi. me and Srihari have uh, been, I mean, uh, known each other since quite a while. And we've been uh, swimming since around past like 15 years so far. Uh, today we have a special guest with us, that is uh, Shika Tandon. We'll be uh, soon be, uh, shortly introducing her. And... Uh, Shrihari, talking about Shrihari, he's my co-host and we have some quite few competitions together. We've been on the uh, World Championship team recently, the Asian Age Group and the SAF Games. And plus, Shrihari uh, has been in the finals of the Youth Olympics, the uh, Asian Games and the Commonwealth Games. So, I think we should give a applause for that. So, I'll hand it over to Shrihari. Thank you, Likit, for those kind words. Uh, yeah, Likit and I, I think we've been uh, teammates since 2000, uh, early 2010s, um, in, whether it's the Karnataka team or the Indian team. Uh, and uh, Likit's the uh, senior national champion in the breaststroke events. He's the SAP Games champion in the breaststroke events. And like you said, uh, we were part of the World Championship team together uh, in 2019 and the Asian Asian team as well. Uh, it's been, uh, he's a great breaststroker and uh, we're also doing the same uh, degree course in JN. We're both do, uh, doing the APAC in JN University. And yeah, that's about it. And uh, we have Shita Tandon with us. Uh, we'd like to welcome her. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Shika Tandon is an Olympian and Arjuna Awardee, as you all know. She was the only swimmer to represent India in swimming in 50 meter freestyle and the 100 meter freestyle at the 2000 Olympics in Athens. Um, till date, guys, she is the fastest female swimmer in 50 meter freestyle, and I mean fastest female swimmer. And she's she has won like 37 international medals and 146 national medals and 11 best female swimmer awards. Um, more than that, she has created 75 national records. Whoa, that's a lot. And she has represented India at various events, the Olympics, World Championship, Commonwealth Games, Asian Games, and Asian Indoor Games, Afro-Asian Games. And she has quite a lot of educational qualifications to like achievements. So Shiari will be taking over that. Uh, she's also an Asian Games medalist at the Asian Indoor Games in uh, 2005. Uh, she won a medal in the 100 backstroke. And uh, she's done uh, her master's in, uh, in biology in the Case Western Reserve University in the U.S., master's of science in biotech in Bangalore University in India, bachelor of science in biotechnology, genetics, biochemistry in Bangalore University in India. And after graduating from college, she combined her academic knowledge with her athletic experience to work at the science program to work as the science program lead at the United States Anti-Doping Agency. She was the first Indian and only Indian to be employed by the USADA. Currently, she's, Shika is a project management specialist and works at an exercise intelligence and sports analytics startup, Swexa, and, and also an internationally recognized technology media company, TechCrunch. Okay, so now we'll be handing over to Shika. Maybe we'll hear some words from her and soon we'll start a discussion. Thanks guys, thanks for that, uh, that nice intro. Uh, and thanks of course to you know, JGI and the sports school for uh, inviting me here to share my experiences and just talk about my journey, uh, both as, uh, as an athlete as well as beyond that and you know, how uh, you know, my education uh, 
career essentially took off and you know how that has played a role in what i currently do today uh and i think it's a really important topic because uh we find a lot of kids dropping out of sport at a young age and you know the the number one reason that we hear is uh you know that they want to focus on their education and i feel that you know these are these are definitely two passion pillars of mine education as well as sport because i think they both have their place in a person's uh, you know life and they both bring uh, immense value and i don't think you know the lessons that you learn on a sports field are something you can find from a textbook and things that you find in a textbook may not be something that you're going to find you know at the bottom of the pool uh, and so uh, i don't know if, how many of you guys know but i after 10th standard i uh joined jane college to do 11th and 12th of uc and then i did my bsc at jane college as well and one of my masters also at jane college uh before moving to the us so i have been you know very very fortunate to be associated with uh, the jane group for many many years and uh, you know have uh, been lucky to be supported by them for all those years so um happy to contribute back happy happy to share whatever little i know uh and i think the way we structured this uh this session is for it to be more interactive so i think shriari and likit will uh you know ask me questions and i really would encourage everyone else listening in you know if you have a specific question or if you want me to go a little deeper into something that i may have just touched upon you know feel free to put that in the questions and we'd be more than happy to answer those uh because i want you know you guys listening in to get something out of this so uh if i touch upon a topic feel free to add it in in the questions and like i said we can we can you know talk about it some more okay so we'll start off with the questions we'll ask questions hari yeah yeah so speaking about uh, uh, after your intro speaking about how you uh, also have uh, a lot of laurels in the sports sporting career and also in the athletic field, uh, in the academic field uh, why is it important to pursue education while pursuing a sporting career what made you pick up this scientific field and how is your experience working with the usada so i can take a step back so i mean i started swimming when i was uh when i was 9 years old mm. uh no sorry i was 8 when i started swimming uh i won my first national medal when i was 9 and you know i so I'm at the Olympics at 19 and you know so those are the years that I was in school that I was you know just starting off in in college or typically high school is you know what they call it here yeah. uh and so being a student being an athlete like i mentioned earlier there are things which you learn in the swimming pool which you're never going to learn you know definitely in a high school or a school textbook uh and and vice versa and for me being an athlete through school years you know as an athlete you think about your body you think about how you want to improve you think about performance and it's very very crucial as an athlete to understand who you are uh, and how your body functions and that's really how i got interested in the field of biology because day in and day out whether you think about it or not you know as an athlete you're swimming up and down the pool but you're thinking about your stroke mechanics you're thinking about what works for you you're thinking about how to improve that you know fraction of a second and so really without realizing it you're going through an entire biology class physiology class in your mind and so for me that's uh, that was the gateway into uh, you know being interested in science especially biology it also helped that i had a you know fantastic biology teacher in school uh, at sophias and uh, you know that th- the combination of both those put me on that path of you know science as a as a career and sport as a career just for me happened uh swimming was not my uh sport of choice i started swimming because my brother had asthma and you know he was recommended that he goes to the pool to help his lung capacity and so i was taken along and it was just you know something i was actually scared of the water when i started and that's you know i, I don't know how many people know but i was same, scared same. of the water i was a person always sitting outside i would <laughs> dip my pool in uh, my feet in the pool and i would be you know happy to go home after that so that was me that was me uh, at the pool and all my other friends were jumping in throwing coins in and you know diving in getting that out and so they were the ones having more fun than i was but over the years i began to enjoy it uh, like i said won my first national medal at 9 and you know things from there just started moving forward i started enjoying it uh, put in the time put in the effort 
and uh, you know that interest grew and you know even in terms of qualifying for the olympics it's not something that i had in mind it was never a goal of mine when i started swimming uh, i think i really started thinking about the olympics only in the year you know end of 99 or early 2000 when i realized i was uh, close mm-hmm. to the qualifying time uh and you know even the events that i was trying to qualify in were the distance events in 2000 and my in 2004 i ended up swimming the 50 and the 100 free so that's like a stark difference for anyone you know that that is not involved with swimming it's literally like you know running the marathon versus yeah. running the 100 meters they're very very different events uh and so for me the the whole olympics dream was you know just over that four years and then once i qualified in 04 uh you know then i trained really hard to try and make it to 2008 and that's you know i missed the qualifying time uh by a, a few fractions but that's when i created that national record and i mean I, if you had asked me back then that the records would still stand today i mm-hmm. would not have believed you but that is what it is uh and so i think why uh, both academics and sport is truly important is you know for the simple reason that an athlete's career is very very uncertain there's just so much uncertainty you know like things like injuries like an injury could happen today and you may be forced to quit your sport today what are you going to do tomorrow like you have to have that plan b whatever that is and education tends to be you know the best way to uh, have that plan b or set the base for that plan b because that's what happened to me i got injured when i uh, in 2010 when i decided to stop swimming it was a shoulder injury that i couldn't come back from and the education is what helped me set up the base for the career that i have right now and speaking of you know the anti doping agency that i i was drug tested a lot when i was swimming uh, i also saw how the system worked or rather didn't work uh, and so that was definitely a passion of mine that was definitely an interest area and the reason i got that job was not because i was just an olympian or just an athlete was because i had that science backing and that science knowledge so both these two came together at the right place right time for me to get that role and i don't think if uh, you know if, if either of them were missing or you know not in a way that i had them uh, i would have been fortunate to get that role so that's how it all kind of came together and uh, and that's why i truly believe that you know education and and sport have their place uh, in a person's career uh, especially for you know something like swimming which is not well known unfortunately uh mm-hmm. and it's not something that you know can is going to mint you money uh, again unfortunately but the reality is what it is and uh, and I, i really believe that they both go hand in hand in develop, developing a person uh you know just holistically okay so that's amazing and one more thing um i think you're the only person who has been to the olympics in this whole uh, conversation i mean who was watching and everything. but i would like you to give a little like a small brief about how your experience at the olympic games how how you felt because we would really like to know about that i mean the olympics is you know every athlete that's their dream goal whether that is your dream goal when you start off or as you start progressing like it was in my case and it's it's really something that is very very unique to the games where you have like you know close to 10000 athletes from literally every country in the world living in the same place eating together i mean you're sitting at a table on the other end you have a world record holder which you potentially just read about or you know now you you might have seen on the internet but for me way back then it's just people that i had read about and seen pictures of in the paper and now they're just sitting in front of me and we're eating the same meal and you know it's the first place where you know a first time uh, olympian or a world record multiple world record holder like they're all treated the same everyone's you know super friendly with with each other you make a lot of friends you meet people from different countries you're literally just eating together training together competing together and you know the, the kind of bonds and friendships that you make at the games are very very unique and you know obviously you're there representing your country you uh, it's something that you train towards it's something that you know is a lifetime once in a lifetime opportunity and you know just i was fortunate that i could participate in the opening ceremony which is uh, you know where you you walk the round you just come out on onto the field and you have the whole crowd cheering for you you're waving your flag and it's just i mean even now like i'm i have goosebumps i'm talking about it it's you know it's summer out here and <laughs> and i have goosebumps so that's that's the kind of memory that it it just kind of sticks in your mind and it's mm-hmm. uh, it's not something that you can uh, you know necessarily experience outside of the olympics i mean so, so when I've been you to world championships it's uh, not the same <laughs> yep yeah, so when you stood on the block was it like 
it was like the every uh, every other race or it was like something special when you stood on no i think it was team. something special uh, and just the level of nervousness that i had uh, also proved that it was something special uh, <laughs> uh-huh. you know because uh, it was different i think it was also very overwhelming uh, on some level because it's again something that you never practiced for it's something that you've never experienced before so when you're on the block you are very well aware that it is the olympics and it's not just you know any other any other event so it definitely awesome. adds to your mental anxiety <laughs> like we are having right now <laughs> <laughs> uh, so okay are you currently involved in sports like how so and what do you do uh i am involved in sports i yes. have you know throughout my career been involved in sport in some shape or form so after the us anti doping agency i started working at you know a couple of fitness wearable uh, device companies uh and right now i'm a product manager and i handle product and partnerships for a exercise intelligence company uh it's based out here in in the bay area in san francisco and what we really trying to do is you know like as athletes and coaches like they collect a lot of data when uh, swimmer or any athlete trains or competes uh so what we try and do is take all that data and put it together and uh, you know showcase that data in a format which is beneficial to the athlete and to the coach which helps them make you know more informed decisions on uh, how they should personalize or optimize that particular athlete's uh, training for that day because i mean we all know like you recover differently i recover differently the amount of load that your body takes and the amount of load my body takes is very very different uh, you know even from day to day my body works differently and so yeah. That's just funny. given how sports has progressed uh, you know all over the world where literally fractions separate uh, you know the person who comes first and the person who you know comes eighth in the final uh, so i think technology plays a huge role in in performance and recovery and just like optimizing that and personalizing that whole training experience so that's what we try and do uh, it's a very very fascinating field uh very different from what i did at the anti doping agency uh but uh, it's definitely a field for the future that's great so speaking about uh, how the sport has been uh, how the sport has developed and how training methods have changed uh my stem coach i think you know him uh, declan uh, he says that indian athletes in general train very hard physically and show the most fear slash discipline in training yeah so so most fierce slash discipline in training why he says this is because he trains a lot of other sports athletes as well like uh, sana nehwal and uh, upcoming badminton champ uh, laksh and uh, what he's noticed in badminton badminton is all the athletes have changed their approach to the sport and training and it has shown drastic uh, results and performances improved uh, a lot so how do you think indian swimming um, what in our are like in phase as in what way do you think indian swimming lacks to reach the next level in terms of training i think a few things i mean when i was training uh, you know our coach was the the one stop shop for literally every question you had he was a you know strength and conditioning coach he was our uh, you know mental uh, mental training coach he was you know recovery expert nutrition expert and obviously the swimming expert so you know he was literally the one person i mean he also was the one person that i went to for for any question that i had and i think uh, those those roles uh, for those different uh, you know verticals have definitely expanded uh, mm-hmm. in terms of you know the, how much we know about nutrition how much we know about recovery and i think world over and you know in sports that is, that are doing well uh each of those different roles is taken up by uh, by one person uh and that way they can expand their knowledge on that one uh, one subject and then share that knowledge uh with the athlete and the coach and so I, that really encompasses you know a support system where you have a nutritionist on a team you have an athlete you have a coach you have a strength and conditioning uh coach and they all come together to you know help that athlete perform uh, to the best of their ability and i think that's something that indian swimming even today lacks uh that's definitely one aspect of it and the second is uh you know things are improving but i think there's still a long way to go uh in terms of where indian swimming is and where the rest of the world is and also the second aspect that i you know touched upon earlier is the technology piece where you know 
technology is something uh, that drives performance that drives your understanding of performance because the last thing you want is just to overtrain and get injured uh, and that was you know the mindset earlier where that the more you train the harder you train every single day uh, you know if or if you just come in and train really really hard every single day that's the way to perform uh, but i think now just how much we understand more about our body it's not so much about you know just training hard every day it's about mm-hmm. training optimally every day and that's the key difference uh, which you know helps you one come back the next day and be able to give you 100% on every single workout and you know not go into that red zone where you you know you're potentially uh, at a risk for injury because we all know that you know can take you away from the sport yeah. for a while so i think the technology piece of it definitely uh, and also the just the support system i think those are those are two aspects which we could definitely uh, improve on then maybe i think even about the recovery part uh the overtraining only happens when you know the athletes don't recover right yeah so maybe we are not focusing much on recovery maybe the athletes are not sleeping properly they're taking their sport lightly and it's not just about about sleeping right i mean it's i could sleep 8 hours and you could sleep 8 hours but mm-hmm. the quality of the sleep matters quality, you know like yes, yes, stress this i'm not going to be fresh and ready to train the next day and if you had you know a sound sleep for 8 hours you would be more fresh yeah. than i am it mm-hmm. could also depend on things like you know what workout Some did you part. do the previous day yeah. okay. it could also depend on your things like your mental status you know like right now everyone's in lockdown and you know everyone's mental anxiety is way higher than what it is when you're at the pool and training so yeah. you know people are anxious and when you are anxious just think about like just before a race if you're <laughs> mentally you know anxious and nervous mm-hmm. your performance is going to be a certain yeah. way and it's going to make an impact on you know how you you perform so things like that if you can account for your mental anxiety uh your physiology just how you metabolize your 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 nutrition things like that if you can take those into account every single day and then adjust your training based off of that i think that is okay. incredibly valuable uh mm-hmm. to you know to optimize your time in the pool it's like you're going there for 2 hours make the 2 hours count yeah. you know and that's really what it's all about yeah okay okay that's awesome yep. so uh now as we are, as our topic is about education and sports uh right now there are a lot of uh, facilities coming up to you know um support sport and education both and one of the facilities is our sports school so what do you think about the concept of sports school i think it's fantastic i mean when i was in uh, jain college there was a running joke that said you know jain college has uh, the maximum number of olympians and world champions and we don't even have our own ground <laughs> uh-huh. uh and uh, so that was a running joke but i mean honestly the sports school is just fantastic i mean the kind of facility that's there i haven't been to it but i have you know read about it i've seen pictures and i've you know heard about the plans uh and you know been part involved in some of the strategy as well but i think it's fantastic it's definitely a place you know which allows uh, athletes to come in and to do both their education as well as their sport and a lot of times you know there's this conflict between teachers and your coaches where you know each one feels that uh, the other is taking away the athlete's time so i think in a in a facility like this which you know allows the uh, the the coaches the athletes and the teachers to all be in sync and to help that uh, that athlete you know achieve their goals be it you know education or sport or combined i think that goes a long way because that reduces the friction uh it also helps again build that whole support system teachers are definitely a uh, part of that support system um and so i think uh it it's a great uh it's a great start for you know for for indian sport to have a facility like this and i think it's one of the very few in india like it so uh you know definitely kudos to to everyone involved in you know bringing this together yeah it is a great facility uh the swimming pools are yet to be ready but the other sports facility is really good uh yeah so talking about uh, indian swimming uh, male swimmers in india have been progressing consistently over the years women too were doing really well when we had swimmers like you and uh, nisha millet uh, but uh, after you stopped there seems to have been a huge void why has that happened what needs to be done to come out of that void for indian women and what are some of the challenges faced by women swimming so uh yes i mean you're right uh, in the past few years uh, you know we've not had as many uh, i guess we've had one indian uh, olympian who was a girl uh, shivani in in 2016 uh, 
but you know we've we've had a lot of uh, junior swimmers in the women's category that have you know shown a lot of uh, potential very talented uh, but you know for whatever reason they've you know not come as far as the as the men men swimming has and i think one of the you know potentially one of the reasons is you know just how uh, you know men and women train like their bodies are different and it goes back to you know earlier what i mentioned about optimizing training for for the athlete and so you know if there's a way to optimize training for women and you know maybe differently from what it is from the men i think that would definitely help uh also having you know when nisha and i was swimming we were allowed to swim uh you know a lot of events uh mm-hmm. and so i would swim you know like at nationals i would swim 10 events mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. literally like i mean there were some meets for <laughs> one seniors when i swam literally every single event oh. uh and uh, so at at that time there was you know competition in every single event and i think yeah. now we restrict our swimmers to five events at a very young age uh and so it's almost like you know each one takes their own five events and then yeah. they all just kind of continue on to the seniors in those five events so there's no there's no competition in a way that it used to be mm-hmm. uh where you know now everyone has their events and they're comfortable and they know that okay if i go for nationals in these three events i'm going to win a medal yeah. great and so i don't i think the motivation is different uh mm-hmm. right now uh i think also uh you know with 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 the men swimmers it's we've had a lot of good swimmers uh, come up you know veer and sandeep have won asian games medals and you know that's definitely motivated uh, the the male swimmers to to believe that that is possible um i think we need to talk about our you know women athletes a lot more than we do uh, you know even when you think about sponsorships like by default i feel like the male athletes you know tend to get looked at and the women athletes get overlooked uh, that's something i've seen uh and i so, so i think we need to treat them you know both equally if we really want them both to succeed equally and and that's that's my two cents on it you know sitting so far away awesome so um again you were saying that uh, the athletes are not getting uh, they're not able to do many varieties of events because they're restricted to it so can you like uh, as you're in the us right now us and uh, so can you explain the um structure over there maybe like uh, what's happening over there and how we can incorporate it or how we can support it so in, here uh, i mean how it works is that you know everyone trains uh, you know their respective clubs uh, uh when they're at the age group level but also you know middle school sports high school sports okay. those are very very big here and you know so right from the age group of you know when they're in like the 5th grade 6th grade they uh you know they're all part of this team and the system which uh you know incorporates uh, athletics as well as education and a lot of the junior swimmers who uh, or rather a lot of the swimmers who as, as juniors they were doing multiple sports and i think in india we tend to just you know quickly focus on yes. you know one sport where we feel that we can okay let's quickly pick this sport Yes. fastest chance for me to get a medal uh, let me pick this this event because there's nobody else yes. i could get a medal and you know and that's it and that's really not the focus here the focus here at the younger ages is you know really developing uh, your skill set in that sport or multiple sports yeah. and then uh, as you move on to high school that's when you maybe you know specialize into uh, one single sport and yeah. uh, you know then when you go into college uh, the ncaa system here is you know is extremely robust uh, student athletes are you know everywhere like every college has a swim team every college has you know a men swim team women swim team with like you know 20 30 athletes uh, in in each group and you know so the, the the whole concept of a student athlete is not uncommon here and in fact it's very very well respected uh and i think that uh, allows more people to enter the sport allows more people to you know navigate the education system and allows a lot more people to uh you know participate in college and also beyond and a lot of lot of athletes actually peak only when they are in college or even beyond yeah. uh you know some of them go through college swimming a certain uh certain event but once they graduate from college uh that's when they you know pick a uh, yeah. pick an event and really uh, you, you know uh, enhance their performances in, in those so it's i think it's it's a system wide uh, 
culture here where you know everything goes hand in hand to develop that uh, that elite uh, student athlete yep and i feel uh, that's something that we can change uh, in india and how we approach uh, sports in general and not hold ourselves back to one sport and uh, talking about the ncaa system in the us uh, a lot of athletes now from india i would say since 2018 or 2019 have been uh, taking up uh, scholarships or uh, up trying to get into the states uh, to study and swim uh, in a, in a division 1 or division 2 or any uh, college and uh, until i would say last year we haven't had any really uh, we haven't really had any major uh, this, uh, uh, big improvements or the, uh, great results from the those who have shifted uh, to the us and now a lot of athletes are so what is your take on that and uh, what do you think about the way uh, like you did explain how everything is uh, approach in the us when it, when it comes to college but what what is your opinion on how it is approached so i mean on some level it's 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 a different approach but on mm-hmm. some level it's it's very similar uh, in terms of you know the the training styles might be different from coach to coach but that's expected uh, so you know yes like you mentioned there are in the past you know few years a lot more swimmers coming out here to yeah. uh, to participate and in, in ncaa sports and Uh, for swimming that's something new uh, i've seen that happen in different sports especially tennis uh, where it was pretty common you know for uh, for uh, for kids to come out here uh, for and participate in ncaa and i mean there are two ways of looking at it right i mean at that age uh, so i had the opportunity to come here uh, mm-hmm. for high school and college but i chose not to and my reasons for not coming here at that time were because you know my goal at that point was to participate in the olympics and you know the asian games and so it just so happened that those events were going to happen in the middle of uh, you know my four year college if i was to come here and you know one of the things is that depending on where you are in your career when you come here it's not always the easiest to go back and compete for that asian games or compete in the world championships because they all happen you know uh, every other year and then if you're trying to get to the olympics and you know there are certain criteria that you have to uh, satisfy you know like going to the world championships and so it's it's a hard challenge to you know come back and participate in those uh, you know given just how far it is uh, how far the us is so those are things which i took into consideration when i made my decision not to come here for uh, you know ncaa um but having said that i mean the they're definitely positives i mean the kind of training that happens here in ncaa is very very high level uh, especially in division 1 uh, you know a lot of the uh, uh, the olympic medalists world record holders are all ncaa uh, athletes and so the level of uh, of competition even during training is very very high so you know it's it's something that definitely pushes you i've i've benefited from that when i came out here to train i you know was able to train with a group of athletes that were way faster than me something that i had never had a chance to do in india i used to always train with the boys uh, so you know so that pushed me to get better than what i was uh, so from that angle yes i think you know ncaa and the collegiate program here uh, allows you to train potentially way harder than you would otherwise because now you have people pushing you to do that mm-hmm. uh, but also there are challenges you know things like you're moving away from home uh, how are you as a person are you able to handle four years away from home uh, when you come out here you have to do everything you have to wash your own clothes you have to potentially cook your own food you know pack your own swimming bag you know all of that so those are things which you know if someone's not used to doing then that's an additional thing that they have to add to their day and i've seen people who you know are unable to do that and so their whole uh, you know they they're not able to juggle everything and so their swimming you know takes a back seat eventually in the four years but if you're able to manage all that if you're able to you know be independent be self motivated i think uh, the ncaa program is is pretty incredible so um again there are a lot of young viewers watching this um i would like you with your knowledge like uh, tell them give them few uh, your opinion about the career after their uh, their uh, like sporting life so what do you think they can shift towards or go towards what can what can they give for the sport back like the career opportunities yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, like I, I talked about early on, right? Like for me, going into the anti-doping agency was because I enjoyed, you know, biology as a subject. Mm-hmm. And, you know, earlier, if, when you th- thought about career options, if you enjoyed biology, by default, people are thinking doctor. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, then you then you say, oh, I can't be a doctor and, uh, and a swimmer. So I want to do, you know, go and take a, uh, you know, focus on my education. And I, I think that's a myth one because, you know, we have someone, uh, Srinand, who is a doctor and, you know, participated in, in sport at a pretty high level. So, uh, so it's, combining both are definitely possible. But in terms of career uh, options, I think there are a lot of career options out there, uh, you know, both in terms of uh, where sport is uh, at the center of the career, things like, uh, you know, if you want to go into sport management or if you want to go into sport marketing or brand marketing, you know, if you, if you want to work with sport teams. Uh, but I also feel like, you know, you don't have to, as a career outside of, uh, once you, you know, quit your uh, quit your sport, you don't have to go back and do a sport that is, you know, uh, go back and do a career that is, is sports centric. Yeah. People become lawyers, people become doctors, you know, uh, you can then, once you become that lawyer, then you can specialize in maybe sports law, if that's something of interest to you. Like the company where I work, I mean, we have people who are physiologists, who are data scientists. So it has nothing to do with sport directly, but indirectly, those are all fields that you can, uh, you know, now apply to sport. You know, things like if somebody is doing computer science and if you like building apps or if you like, you know, building websites, now there are so many fitness apps out there. So now potentially you can indirectly work on a fitness app. So you're involved in in sport or health or fitness because that's your passion. Uh, But, you know, you're not necessarily becoming a coach. Again, you know, a lot of people do become coaches and that's Mm -hmm. great. But on the flip side, not everyone wants to become a coach and that's also perfectly fine. So, you know, it's, it's really ways to take your traditional careers and indirectly apply them to sport. And I think that's what people, you know, tend to miss out on when they're making those decisions to, uh, to pursue a sport or to pursue a certain subject or not. I mean, even if you think about commerce, like you know, there's so many business opportunities in uh, when you, which you can apply to sport. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you think about entrepreneurship, like where I work right now, we have, you know, venture capitalists, we, we you know, we uh, interview them and we work with them. Uh, and a lot of them are focused on sports technology. So it's it's all like an indirect connection to sport, uh, mm-hmm. if that's what you want. And I think that's where the real opportunity lies. If, you know, if direct things like coaching uh, is not for you. So um, about uh, the current generation and how uh, social media is a really big thing now. And... Uh, uh, a lot of swimmers and athletes deal with distraction and pressures of social media. And uh, some would say you were fortunate when you were swimming to not have the same uh, amount of social media as we do now. And uh, how do you uh, advise athletes or swimmers to handle with this? And uh, if if you did have the same amount of social media, if, you, if all of this existed back in your peak or when you were a a teenager how would you have dealt with it yeah i mean i definitely uh you know i got my first phone i think when i was 19 uh mm-hmm. which is you know now if you tell someone that that's unheard of <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh but yeah i even you know when i was training uh social media was not as big as it is currently and but the reality is you know it, it is a thing that's how we consume media that's how we consume information and it's here to stay and so it is definitely a part of you know, every person's life right now. Uh, but I think the one advice that I would have is, you know, like with everything, like with when uh, it's just how you choose to engage with it. You know, you can you can spend your all day on social media or you can choose to allocate a certain amount of time uh, for social media and, you know, social media con- uh, content consumption uh, in a day. Like, you know, it's, it's how you want to structure your day. You know, think about like an athlete where, yes, you have all the food available to you, but do you really go and eat all of it? No, you don't. You think about what's good for you and what's not. And you, you know, cut down on the things that you shouldn't be eating on. So in a very similar capacity, I think social media is always going to be there. It's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, there are multiple, multiple uh, forms of social media, yeah. but it's really how you choose to, to use it, uh, yeah. engage with yeah. it or not, you know, and there's no right or wrong. It's really what works for you. You know, like a nutrition yeah. plan that works for person A does not work for person B. Yeah. So 
that would be my advice as far as social media goes and if you feel like it's distracting you you know cut off from it or you know like yeah. find what that fine balance is for you as a person uh, and engage with it accordingly and i know there's a lot of uh, you know sometimes uh, people feel the need to you know put themselves out there on social media and have this brand presence uh, but if you feel like that's distracting you you know take a step back it's okay not to be on social media uh you know there are multiple athletes who, who whose whole life is not on social media and there are some whose whole life is on social media so it's really what works for you uh and in terms of structuring your day uh you know there's a lot of time to be honest we mm. we're at the pool you know maybe 6 7 hours a day we've got a gym workout on certain days of the week uh you've got a whole day off on 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 sunday okay. you know potentially half a day on wednesday and and saturday and so even if you can spend you know half an hour or one hour a day just reading something from your textbooks i think that goes a long way at the end of the year uh you know it, it instead of scrolling on social media scroll your textbooks you know like and and a lot of the textbooks yeah. are even available online so if you really feel that need to hold on to your <laughs> phone, just phone read something that that is relevant to you yeah. uh, so i think it it boils down to how you structure your day you know like there's a lot of time that can be wasted uh, if you want to that's a choice it, that you make <laughs> self in your career yeah. so it's it's really you know the, the wasted time adds up uh, yeah. and just like how you would spend uh, you know like you you're not going to go into a nationals and try to cram the whole years worth of training in the last one month right it's it's very very stressful and it's not going to work so okay. similarly even for your education if you can do just a little bit every single day you're not going to be stressed out at the end of the year and you know then you you're not having that need to pick education versus sport because yeah. they kind of go hand in hand and you've done it through the year and it's it's less uh, less hectic talking about um, you know at this topic um the parents seems to kind of have some uh, kind of peer pressure on the athlete and it's always like the um, athlete has to swim well or do their sport well in order to get a good seat in the college you know it always been like that and yeah. in this process you know in this pressure process uh, i mean the athletes drop their uh, careers and focus completely shift their thing towards their educational side i mean uh, like you have achieved a lot in both education and sport what is your advice to the parents for this so i mean my parents didn't push me they were extremely encouraging and you know honestly i would not be where i am if it wasn't for their support uh, i would never talk about swimming at home that was just my rule when i left the pool i left the pool how uh, the uh, so i mean i think even today if you ask my my mom and dad my times they probably won't even be able to uh-huh, answer same. it uh, you know half the time my dad was like oh so what event you had my dad's watched me swim once or maybe twice at the most and only because you know that they went happened to be in in bangalore uh, my mom traveled with me for uh, you know most of my events uh, but yeah i mean it boils down to you know just supporting your athlete and knowing that yes not every single person that comes through the doors of the swimming pool is going to be an olympian not everyone is going to be an international medalist not everyone is going to be a national medalist uh, and that's okay you know it's it's perfectly fine but the lessons that an olympian learns uh, the lessons that a national medalist learns the lessons that a state medalist learn you know just by putting in the hours and being dedicated to the sport i think are pretty equivalent i mean it's not like as an olympian i have a certain set of skills which are very unique to you know somebody that that didn't make it to the olympics we all learn time management we all learn uh, you know how to set goals we all learn uh, how to be dedicated towards the goals that we set so i think the skills that we learn uh, you know are across the board whether you are at the olympics or not and i think as parents if we can focus i'm a parent now so i'm saying we uh if we can focus on you know having the kid uh enjoy the sport encourage them to enjoy the sport help them understand themselves help them make decisions for themselves because you know kids are smarter than we give them credit for i see my 2 year old and the things that she does and that she picks up and learns every day it just absolutely amazes me and i think we need to give you know kids more credit uh, where it's due and i think in terms of them understanding who they are i think it's important to guide them to a certain point but then also you know let them understand themselves and that's when they can take you know really meaningful decisions which work for them uh and i think so that would be my advice you know be extremely supportive uh and you know understand your kids 
and help them understand themselves because that's when the best decisions get made yes uh, hi guys uh, i know the session is going on you know pretty well but you know there are a lot of people waiting to interact with shika so you know now uh, i would like to open the session for the media interaction so i would like to welcome all the members of the media and kritika as well who is the head of head of marketing and sales at the sports school so i welcome you all to the session Uh, thanks vetri uh, so guys we'll start with the media interaction so uh, we already have uh, i think i've unmuted everyone so we have uh, first question from uh, mr amit gupta amit are you online yep yeah so maybe you could go ahead because you typed out the question first okay, i'll i'll first ask you uh, first uh, like to ask chika and uh, and listen how how soon are you guys expecting swimming to resume after this covid thing is over i mean swimming is one of the sport where social distancing doesn't mean anything at all i mean so how are you looking at that scenario especially in an olympic year if if likit uh, sp can answer answer that question for me oh yeah i mean uh, talking about that uh, we uh, i mean there's a lot of uh, social uh, wait uh it's going it's going to resume okay it's not like it's not going to resume uh, this is actually out of the topic we are talking uh, and then uh, i mean there is a lot of uh, social interaction which also takes place outside the swimming pool it's not the only we, we just don't go in, in and we just don't jump in so i mean we change and so that's why it's taking a it's a pandemic come on it cannot open that uh, easily so maybe we are looking around like 3 to 4 months to yeah. really come into action but it's going to be fine i mean these swimmers are trained enough uh, to get get back on track it's not going to be a problem they're going to do fair well for the country so that's it that's it all that's all i had to say hello hello yes yeah and and chika this i i was listening to you earlier i mean for a sportsman uh, when does a sportsman actually decide that you know he needs to look beyond or look look beyond the sports which he she is playing and we, he she has played for say 20 21 22 years of her, of his or her life and now he has to make a career decision how do you pa- plan that so one uh, i guess two points to that one you don't necessarily plan that in advance when like you don't decide in advance when you want to quit uh, you can set goals for yourself yeah Yeah. and you know once you achieve those goals you can you know make that call and like i said earlier you know someone's goal might be the olympics and someone's goal might be the, the state championships or someone's goal you know could not even be a medal at all they just want to you know gain the values that uh, and skill set that sport brings uh, brings to you and so you know it it's it's a very very individual uh, decision which i think needs to be based off of you as a person you uh, your goals Uh, and where you are in the process of achieving that goal so it's it's really and you know going back to the question of like whether it's been 20 years 15 years whatever it is someone could decide in 5 years that they've achieved what they wanted to and you know and you try and do something else i don't think it's that you know if you've done 15 years you're done or if you've done 20 years you're done there are enough and more athletes in their 30s and their 40s that are still competing and they're well past the 20 years into the sport but they have not achieved their goals that they sent out set out for themselves and so you know they haven't made the call to move on but there are enough and more who do it for 5 years have achieved their goals whatever they might be and and make the call to move on so i think it's a very very uh, individual decision uh, and i think it should be based off of what the athlete has in terms of their goals and and you know other interest areas Thank you, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to Abhishek. Abhishek. Uh, Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we can hear. Hi, Shikha. Uh, so you are one of the athletes. Few athletes in India who have been able to combine sports and education at the highest level uh, since your work with uh, your anti-doping agency. So I would just like to ask you, you know, that India has a very high rate of doping offenses. You know, so your thoughts on India's anti-doping program, and there is often we hear that you know this lack of education in Indian athletes one of the reason that we have a high uh, rate of uh, doping offenses. 
So can you just talk a bit about India's anti-doping program and what can be done, the entire ecosystem of athletes, coaches and support staff? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, like you said, education, I think that is the number one uh, area that I would uh, improve on. Uh, the reason I got interested in anti-doping was, you know, I was tested a lot as, a, as an athlete. Uh, people around me tested positive. Uh, nothing was done about it necessarily. Uh, and also, you know, when you we went for national camp, we would find, uh, you know, just syringes lying about. We would see, hear about that in the in the paper. And so that was kind of where my interest into uh, this field uh, started. Uh, but I think education and, you know, now being here at the anti-doping agency, seeing how things work in the U.S. and, you know, other countries as well. I think education is the biggest, biggest differentiator where, you know, I, we need to have a structured education program which uh, you know spans across not just coaches or athletes or parents or it also needs to include you know all your doctors out there all your medical staff be it physiotherapists be it you know strength and conditioning coaches whoever it is like anyone that is part of an athlete support system needs to be educated um, on anti-doping rules uh, and regulations because the the fact is that they impact everyone Everyone has their role to play in it, uh, and everyone is held uh, responsible uh, in in some shape or form. And also with anti-doping rules, I mean, WADA comes out with the rules, and they are updated. Uh, not the rules, but the the anti-doping, the prohibited list is updated every single year. So when you talk about education, it's not a one and done. Where you know I did this pro education program ten years ago, and you know it, it's fine. It has to be done every single year. Every single athlete needs to go through it. Every single coach. Every single support staff needs to go through it and you know it, when you go to doctors they should know that you're an athlete or you can tell them that you're an athlete and they should know and be aware of these rules and regulations so i think uh, the education needs to you know reach far beyond what it currently does thank you sure. yeah uh, we'll move on to nakshatra uh, nakshatra your audio is Fun fact: She already started swimming when at the age of two, I guess. Like, yeah. Really? yeah. What are you doing, man? Same like Shikha's story. My brother had asthma and had to be taken to the pool. Yeah, so uh, I couldn't be controlled. There, so. <laughs> I think uh, Nakshatra. I think there's some uh, issue with the audio. So. If her question's in the chat, we can just... Yeah, that's what... Maybe we can just read out the question. So, Nakshatra wanted to ask... Uh, just one second. I see I one much, way. How much of a priority is yeah. getting yeah. right now in India? Is it on the same level as something like badminton? Um, badminton is doing really, really well. Uh, we've won multiple, you know, uh, Olympic medals from that sport. Uh, so, I don't think you can compare swimming to badminton. Uh, at least right now in terms of performances. Uh, but, you know, I think swimming as a priority, I think, is definitely taking shape. Uh, it's it's a sport that needs to fit into a country's culture uh, because it it's for, goes far beyond, you know, just the swimming pool. It's, you know, it's, it's a life skill at the end of the day. Uh, and so it needs to be given more priority just, uh, just from that aspect. Uh, so it's, it's definitely more than what it was. Uh, when I was in India 10 years ago, uh, but there's, you know, a, a long way to go, uh, definitely. If I can add to that, uh, badminton is getting the attention that it is now and is being treated the way it is because of the multiple Olympic medals and the World Championship medals that they uh, achieved over the past decade or so. And I think one swimming, uh, a few swimmers hit them here. Uh, Hit the international circuit, uh, a few medals, maybe a few swimmers achieving the A qualification, it should change. Right. And like, I mean, like, uh, exactly. So, I mean, when I was swimming, I was the first one to do, uh, you know, Nisha in 2000 was the first one to qualify the B qualifying. I was the first one to do two events B qualifying. Yeah. Uh, you know, then in 20, uh, 2008, we had, you know, multiple swimmers doing yeah. multiple deep qualifyings. Uh, you know, 2012 was uh, was different. Again, yeah. uh, and 20, now when we think about 2020, like you guys are talking about A qualifying time. Yeah. So, sport is definitely progressing. Uh, yeah. But I think there's still, you know, a, a long, long way to go. Yeah. 
like i really think the multiple sport uh, aspect which you said that's the i think that's the key for you know gaining uh, you know master control over your body itself yeah uh, because my coach he always keeps stressing on that because of him i have you know got myself into skateboarding slacklining and a uh, lot of poi movements animal flow a lot of um, lot of stuff a lot of movement uh, sports so i think i mean that's the way, i mean that's the important key to you know the junior athletes they can improve on and they can trans- translate that what they have learned outside in, inside the water yeah. i think that's going to improve right and Learning. i i mean i i uh, like i said swimming was not my my sport of choice when i started i mm-hmm. loved running uh okay. and you know i at the age of 8 wanted to be uh, a runner so i went to the reet abraham uh, academy in bangalore and she said they don't take kids till they're nine so she said you go do whatever you want for a year and come back on your ninth birthday and i'll take you and by by that that time i was already swimming and and you know committed to swimming but i still enjoyed running so even in school like i would participate in in running and literally every single event right from the 100 meters to like the 800 meters uh i used to do long jump high jump javelin like you name it skipping awesome. we had this slow cycling race i used to do that like literally everything in school uh for sports day and represent the school for running and what not so i mean the whole multi sport yeah. uh, i think i agree with like i mean even though i was at the pool 6 hours a day but i was also doing a lot of uh you know running and and, and non swimming stuff all the way till i was 16 awesome so now we have a uh, aprajita who would like to ask a question aprajita are you online uh yeah can you hear me am i audible yeah yes. you're audible hi uh so my question is like uh um, Shikha, you've uh, been an Olympian, and this is a very this current situation. It's very uncertain. Like there is no training also happening right now, and it's a situation that none of us would have imagined would take place. So, what could your advice be to Likhit and Shihari and whoever is has qualified for the has the B qualification and they need to prepare for the Olympics? So they can't go into the pool right now. So, what is your advice to them? Ah, uh, I mean. one world over swimmers are in the same boat so it's not like you know some of them are you know uh, not being able to do something while the others can but my biggest advice would be you know treat it like a little break uh, we never get to take a break the olympics have been moved out by a year uh, you know make the most of the additional year that you have to train and you know yes you're not being able to go to the pool and train and, and nobody knows when those pool, the pools will open but i think it's a golden opportunity to you know think about uh non pool related training you know things like your mental training things like your flexibility things like your stretching i mean when was the last time you got an hour a day or even more to just stretch uh you know when was you got a chance to sleep in you're not having to worry about that alarm ringing at 5 a.m uh you know so use this time to reset and recharge reset, yeah. uh you know reevaluate your goals if that's what you want to do uh since this topic is on education and sport study so that when march comes around you don't you, you don't have to stress about your exams uh you know it it's the little things that you do now uh that will make a difference when you're finally able to go back to the pool so you know mental training is is the very very big component to peak performance use the time uh to focus on that uh you know l- the internet still available it's everything still working go online learn what other people are doing you know learn more about your sport if you have other interest areas learn about that think about you know other careers that you want to pursue when when you are you know eventually done with your sport and so there there's a lot to do i mean for people that say that they are bored i think uh, they're not uh, spending their time wisely right now because there's enough to do yeah Uh, yeah, Sundari has a question. Sundari from uh, Mitte. What are the challenges that you foresee for the swimmer post the lockdown? I think that's the question she has. I think some of the challenges would definitely be, you know, your body might be a little rusty getting back in the pool. Uh, that's for one. Uh, also, the uncertainty of. not knowing when your next competition will be i mean i just read uh, was it yesterday or this today that about the national games yeah. uh, being moved so you know the just the uncertainty of when you're going to be able to get on the block and race uh, you know that's definitely going to be one of the challenges uh, but uh, you know i can give you an example from from my career where 
uh, back in 2006, this was just before the Asian Games, I uh, had a shoulder surgery and I was at home for three months where I, you know, my arm was strapped to my body because I, of the surgery and I couldn't lie down for three months. I had to sit and sleep. I, I couldn't move my arm. And the day I got back to the pool was like a few, like not few, it's like a couple of months before the Asian Games. And I had to literally, that the first day I went back, I could not even lift my arm. So I swam the first session with one arm. You know, that's that's not an ideal situation. And so, you know, I think about this lockdown very similarly, where, you know, you've got this three-month break, you're going to be a little rusty, uh, but uh, it's not something that you want to really come back from uh, because you've got all those years worth of experience and base training that uh, that you've already put in. Uh, I think that answers uh, Prasad's question also. Prasad, uh, it, uh, he wanted to know, you know, how much time will it take for swimmers to be tournament ready once the lockdown is over? I think that also uh, depends on like what hmm. event, right? I mean, yeah. uh, the 50 meter freestyle is very different from a 1500 meter freestyle. So it depends on the athlete. It depends on what they've done, uh, you know, during the lockdown. Are they mentally recharged or are they just mentally drained? Like I said, talked about right in the beginning, just your mental uh, status makes a huge difference in terms of how you approach your training, physical training day to day. So it's, I think it's, again, it's going to take, it's not, a blanket statement that I can make. I think it's going to be very individual. Uh, but if you've got the base training and if you've done things right and use your time well, I think it will be pretty quick. And, uh, we have one question from Nakshatra. He's asking a lot of struggling athletes tend to fall victim to drugs as the easy way out and end up ruining their career. How can the sport as a whole deal with it? I think it, this goes back to the point I made about education uh, and the education piece is not only restricted to you know what are the substances prohibited and what is not. I think education goes into you know helping athletes understand more about themselves and helping them understand more about the sport, helping them doing the sport, helping them educate themselves on you know potential alternative career options because I think they, you feel like this is your only path, then you're going to be overly stressed out about going down that path. But if you know that there are other avenues uh, that, you know, takes a little pressure and burden off of, uh, you know, the, the swimming a little bit. And uh, I think when we talk about swimming and in India, I mean, a lot of times people are using it to get a job. But if you know that, you know, there are other ways to get a job, you know, like by studying or like combining your education or your other interests, then, you know, maybe the stress of, you know, performing at the pool won't be as high. Or when, when I say performing, you know, they're really thinking about just the medal. And so, you know, that uh, that goal of just getting that medal then could be offset into how can I enjoy the sport the most and how can I, uh, you know, get maximum meaning from this sport and build my skill set uh, as, as an athlete. So I think uh, it really boils down to education on on, on all fronts. Uh, I think there are a lot of other questions, Sri Hari and Likit. Maybe you could just take it up from the comments box. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so we have a question from... You go ahead. Likit, go ahead. Okay. So I think we have a question from Sandeep. Uh, it's an interesting question. Do you think that somewhere in the head of the Indian swimmers, there is a doubt that they will, they can, they can't be as good as the swimmers from the US and the rest of the world? Asking this because I've seen a change in body language of the Indian swimmers at the national versus the body language at the same of the same at the world championship uh, also if you can explain to the young kids how a big factor this is for an athlete yeah i mean that's that's a really great great question and and i've seen this myself i've felt it myself <laughs> uh, you know where you're more nervous at a world championships than you are at a nationals uh, and I think a few ways to, uh, you know, how what I learned as my career progressed and how to tackle this is, you know, one is that you you read about all these athletes uh, and they are your idols. And, you know, at a nationals, you don't see them at a nationals, you're potentially winning and the stress is a little lower. Uh, and but when you go for a world championships, you know, suddenly somebody who you idolize is literally standing in the lane next to you and you're competing with them. So that can be very, very overwhelming uh, for a person. Uh, and I think that can, you know, those those self-doubt of am I good enough because now I've heard about this post person and I've put them up on a pedestal. Uh, but, you know, I think 
the way to battle that is uh, you know swim in your own lane that's something yeah. niyas told us all the time just swim in your own lane like whether the person next to you uh, you know you cannot control their race yeah. but you can control yours so you know yes it is overwhelming when you go in and see all these athletes you've idolized but at the end of the day if you can focus on your own race focus on your uh, your performance focus on what you need to do i think uh, that goes a long way uh, and uh, also in terms of you know as you're training and you know how do you kind of mitigate that doubt is to also race more frequently you know because when when a athlete has more race practice uh, then they they automatically become a lot more confident in their abilities to race uh, so that's something i feel like as indian swimmers we uh, you know definitely could have more exposure to which is uh, more racing practice uh, and if it's not always possible to go out and actually race you know we kind of substitute that with time trials it's not the same but yeah. you know that that's one way to one way to do it so it's really about confidence it's really about uh belief in your own abilities and it's also about you know being able to refocus your uh your your mind and just focusing on what you need to do in the in that moment yeah uh, so our next coach pradeep sir uh wanted to know uh, what advice do you have for the new gen of swimmers uh i think it's you know take the time to enjoy the sport i think there's just so much focus on uh on success and i put that in quotes because again that really just means a medal it's really not about that the medal it comes uh you know as it's almost like a side effect of the work the and the effort that you put in and the, and the enjoyment that you have uh i i swam for as long as i did because i enjoyed it uh you know it was never a chore for me to go to the pool uh sometimes i would be the only one in the pool training uh and but i i would still enjoy it and i think uh it it takes away the burden of performance when you're truly there to have fun uh and so i would definitely you know advise kids these days to just go out there have fun and i think uh you know keep reminding yourself of why you're there uh again there's no right or wrong as to what that why is uh some people just go go to the pool because they you know enjoy being fit they like the health aspect of of the pool and the training some people go there because they want to compete at an international level some people go there because they just like the social element and the social aspect of of the pool and again there's no right or wrong it's just you know have fun put in the effort uh don't be afraid to put in the yeah. effort and all for the you know girls out there uh don't be afraid to lift weights in the gym you know like i know body image issues are are a big thing and you know i've been asked so oh, you have too many too much muscles who will marry you and you know those kind of funny things but i mean it i i think do it for do it for the right reasons uh don't worry about what anyone else is saying uh if you feel you want to progress in it go ahead if you feel like you don't that's also okay Okay, so, so uh, yeah. Liketan ji, yari one second. Uh, I received a question. It was, uh, you know, sent privately. So it's a very interesting question. The question is uh, that you know, my kid is ten years old and already mm-hmm. a na- national medal winner in, in the fifty meter freestyle. I need to know about puberty and how to handle them. You know, during their menstrual cycle. Uh, you know, because I think that is one of the very critical, uh, you know, questions that arises in parents' mind. Hundred percent. I totally agree with that. Uh, I think. uh you know for puberty is already a very complicated time uh for everyone uh parents included uh but i think what differentiates you know puberty for uh, a girl and a boy is that just the amount of changes that your body goes through and uh, as a girl uh, and also you know your menstruation cycle it's something that we don't talk about enough and uh you know i feel like coaches need to do a better job with approaching that topic with their athletes uh getting athletes and girls comfortable you know talking about it it's something that happens uh you know for one week every month uh it definitely uh, impacts uh training uh some people some kids get cramps way more than others some don't uh you know some feel sluggish some don't some feel better in that mm-hmm. one week and uh you know are able to train harder and some don't but i think uh my advice would be both for coaches as well as for parents and athletes like be open to having these conversations at the end of the day you know the the training happens between the coach and the athlete and if they cannot communicate then there's going to be something left off the table 
so really be open to having those discussions you can definitely swim uh, when you have your periods uh, it's not um, you know something that you cannot do but i understand everyone's experience is different so be open to talking about what your experience is and how your coach can help you navigate that one week of training uh, and i mean even as a parent i mean talk to your talk to your child about you know that she may feel certain things and it's okay to feel sluggish it's okay to you know uh, to not be able to push as hard in the workout for that week versus you know reprimanding her saying oh you're just being lazy and you're just trying to bunk your workout so i think it's really about understanding having an open conversation and uh, because that's definitely what is going to benefit everyone uh, stay stay in stay in the sport especially the girls because i mean even if you think about competition right like for example if someone if a girl has a period during the nationals you have to go report for your event at least 5 10 minutes before your actual event begins and in that space only your coach is potentially allowed like parents are not normally allowed in that reporting area so at that time like this this poor girl who's you know maybe just in her early teens uh, she's just worrying about bleeding and you know how not to embarrass herself before the the race starts and from a boys perspective they are focused on their race so you can just see the difference in mentality and the focus uh literally 5 10 minutes before the race so you can only imagine how that impacts you know that poor girl's race so being being able to have those conversations being able to plan ahead uh i think definitely goes a long way so just just be open about the topic it's you know i know it's taboo but it really really does not need to be okay uh, you guys can go ahead now so um, we have a question from santoshini talking about the importance of education and sports how is the sports school facilitating the same can you talk about the facilities and infrastructures at the sports school a little brief will be fine i think i think that's the question for kritika because like i said earlier i've not yeah. been to the pool or, or to the to the sports school but i've definitely heard about uh, the programs that they have and you know i th- i think it, like i mentioned earlier in, in the conversation that i i think it's it's pretty unique to india uh uh the facilities and it's going to go a long way in in helping athletes navigate uh, their sport and uh, sport and education yeah, so i think santoshni has uh, two questions right so she wanted to know about shikha's role so shikha is our advisory board member right so all her experience uh, you know that has been shared with us and you know we have taken into account uh, while you know planning the concept of sports school as far as swimming is concerned we have a tie up with the uh, matsya so they are the official sporting partner for swimming and we are already running programs for under 12 14 and 16 and in terms of facilities uh, we already have uh, you know like uh, three pools right now there's a diving pool then there is a 25 meter pool and a 50 meter pool and we are in the process of building two more pools and all these pools are you know uh, you know your fina certified and they are olympic level with 10 lanes and all so you know uh, everything is being done in a way that you know it aids professional players right and uh, they are ready to be on the international level so i think uh, that's the thing about the facility and chika has already shared what she feels about the school right yeah ari yeah there's a question for you yeah i saw it read out loud Yeah, uh, this was really. What is the financial cost of producing a world-class swimmer? And as we chat, do you have a sponsor, and what kind of help are you getting from CSA and the government? Uh, yeah, swimming is an expensive sport. Uh, it does uh, cost in, when it comes into training, traveling, uh, recovery, physio, nutrition, and all of that. Uh, I don't. I don't think I can put a price, exact price, on the what it costs to be a world-class swimmer. uh what i can say what what you need to put in to be a world class swimmer is the training and things related to training uh in terms of sponsorships i am not sponsored by any swim brands i have a nutrition partner and i'm uh, sponsored by puma and uh yes i'm also part of uh, the tops program uh, from sai so i am getting financial uh, support from sai and uh, i think that does make a big difference when it comes to performance uh there's a question uh from him uh he is a swimmer a swimmer from mumbai uh 
Uh, how does one deal with stagnation of performance for a long time? How to get back to it? Uh, I think uh, you know every every swimmer goes through a plateau phase, uh, and I think at when you are going through that, uh, you know it, it's it's time to sit back and just kind of reassess your training potentially. uh you know there are a lot of ways to improve or sometimes you just need a break you know a lot of times that stagnation could be because you're just mentally or physically just exhausted uh and so you know we we don't tend to take breaks when we need to yeah. uh and uh, so understanding your body you know and I, I i can see sandeep's on here and i think he will vouch for you know just taking a break and coming back fresh um so talk to your coach you know and try and understand you know what are ways that you can improve because it could be something that's technique related it could be something that you just have a mental block over it could be something that you know maybe the workouts are not working for you anymore you're older than what you were a few years ago so maybe what worked for you when you were younger is not working for you anymore so understand your body maybe this is post puberty and so your body is different you're recovering differently uh, as as you grow older uh so it could be multiple multiple reasons you know why why we plateau as as athletes so it's really about having that conversation and taking a step back and reevaluating the the smaller things because at the end of the day the smaller things is what makes a difference Nikhit, uh, there's a question directed to us. Uh, we had requested the sports ministry to open swimming pools so you can resume training like other athletes. How the MHK guidelines deem swimming pools unsafe right now? So, how do you propose to go about it? Will you be willing to travel to a center if it's safe? Um, so the travel, no, definitely not. I guess. <laughs> I think I'll. Um, so, how do you propose to go about? What is MHK, by the way? I don't know what MHK is. Yeah, neither do I. MHK is Maharashtra. But I don't no, know. Ministry of Health Affairs, Ministry. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, I mean, the uh, we have to get back into training, and lots of uh, other swimmers in the other countries have, you know, taken, uh, you know, precautions and got back into training. I mean, we have to learn to live with uh, the, what's happening with the situation right now. So, yes, we have. There will be, there will be risk, but I think we can be careful. and once it opens only we can go ahead and start yeah. our training so traveling uh, i mean i wouldn't want to travel to other places maybe my own um, uh, swimming center where i train maybe there only only i would train there or at my coach's place yeah uh, there's a question for shika uh, uh there are different events in swim like freestyle butterfly breaststroke backstroke etc Uh, over different distances uh, for any aspiring swimmer is it best to choose one event or if they can excel in one they have the ability to excel in others does he mean is it best for them to choose one event if they can ex- or should they focus on all uh i mean it depends what uh, you know what age group you're talking about here but i think as a age group swimmer and as a younger swimmer as you're just starting off into the sport i think it's definitely beneficial to swim multiple strokes multiple events uh, like i said earlier in i swam at the olympics in the 50 and 100 free in 2004 and in 2000 i my main events were the uh, you know 400 and 800 freestyle uh, so you know very very different uh, and up until 2000 i was swimming 10 events at nationals that included the uh, the ims and you know all the other strokes uh, so yes i think it's definitely beneficial to uh, to not focus early on or specialize early on uh that's something that comes uh, you know post puberty and you know potentially even a few years after that once your uh, your body uh has matured to a certain level i think that's when it makes sense to uh to 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 specialize because i think if you do that too early you know i started off as a breaststroker okay nice. that and that is not something that i swam uh, at the end of my career so if you specialize too early i mean you know it's uh, things can change uh, because your body changes so yeah i would vouch for multiple sports mul- uh, multiple events multiple strokes all of that awesome so we have a guessing game okay there's a there's a guessing game question for you namaste shika when do you think india will start winning olympic medals in swimming how near are we Name a date. If I had that crystal ball, <laughs> go for it. Ah, uh, 
I, I, like I said, I mean, we're, we're definitely doing well. I mean, we, we're making uh, forward progress. Yep. Uh, the, just the fact that we're talking about A qualifying times, uh, you know, is, is pretty encouraging. So if things go well, you know, you, you're looking at, you know, we have to take it step by step. You can't go from just making an A qualifying time to the Olympic medal podium. Uh, you know, it's a gradual process. It's, you know, then you try and make the A qualifying time, you try and make a semi-final and a final. And then, you know, even in a final, it's it's very, very different from being on the podium and being a finalist. So I think you're looking at like, you know, at least yep. two, three Olympics because that's just the reality and that's how long it takes. And we have the talent. So, I mean, I would love for them to prove me wrong, uh, including the two uh, hosts that I have today. Uh, but uh, it is, you know, it's it's a gradual progress. So if, yep. for someone who's expecting a medal uh, in twenty twenty one, I think it's a little ambitious. Okay, so we have another question uh, from Vallabh. There have been uh, a question for or two revolving around this, but apart from physical and mental aspects of the training, what are the other things that play their part in or in in order to excel? Also, would you please emphasize a little more on how mental training has its edge over training in the pool as well as on the pool? What was the first part of the question, Likit? I couldn't, I couldn't hear you. There have been a question or two revolving around this, okay, comma. Apart from physical and mental aspects of the training, what mm -hmm. are the other things that play their part in order to excel? Oh, I think, I mean, your your entire support system, right? I mean, it's physical, mental, and that's just the two pillars. but uh, physical training is what you do in the pool. It's what you do in the gym. It's how you stretch. It's how you how flexible you are. Mental training is how relaxed you are before the race. It's how you approach your training day in and day out. So there are just multiple layers to uh, to even just physical and mental training. So I think uh, and or, or your entire support staff comes into play right here. Uh, so I think a good community also like some exactly exactly good, community, good teammates. I mean. You enjoy going to the pool because you know you enjoy that social aspect of, yeah. of swimming, and so if you have great teammates, certain, that just makes you want to go at five a.m. Right? <laughs> yeah, but there are certain certain. I mean, there are certain pools where they, they say you're not allowed to talk. Don't talk. Yes, yeah, a lot of pools. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like how I said in my question earlier. Uh, how much time and, for and it, it kind of boils yeah. down to the, it's a fine line, right, between you know socializing and just being distracted. Uh, yeah. So you, yeah. when you're in the pool for two hours, you want to put in that effort for two hours. You know, you don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste your coach's true, time. True. Uh, so there is definitely a social element to it. And we all understand that. But I think there is a fine line between uh, distraction and socializing. Yeah, true. Okay. I think we can just uh, take two, three yeah, more questions. There are, there is, uh, yeah, there is one question, Shika, uh, and I mean, Sharing like it also. It says at what max age one can start the swimming to go to national level, the maximum age when you can enter the sport. It is I don't know if I have the answer to that. I mean, I I don't think there's a you know max age where you can start. Yeah. Adam PT was um, I think 14 when he started swimming. Yeah, I mean there are a lot of examples who you know start examples, later. Yeah. Or, you know, Definitely yeah. considered later in their teens, yeah. early teens. Uh, some oh. some athletes, you know, don't even uh, pick swimming as their as their their single sport till they are, you know, in college maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I don't think there's uh, a maximum age as such. I mean, yeah. and swimming as a sport also, if you look at it, uh, you know, there are swimmers that are in their forties that are you know standing on the Olympic podium. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Anthony Owen won a gold 16 years, but now right now it's 20 years, 20 years ago and then won one again four years ago. So I don't think it's, there is an age that, I don't think there's going to be a limit in terms of that. Shikha, there's a question for you. It says, ma'am, when did you realize you must retire from swimming and doing the job? Mm -hmm. uh, if you can so talk about I you about swimming. Sorry, you, what is that? Maybe you can talk about how you came out of swimming and got into uh, the completely education field. Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah. I uh, I stopped swimming competitively in 2010. Uh, I got a, I mean, there were two reasons for it. One was it was just getting extremely expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, back then there was no concept of sponsors or, you know, any of that. So it was just financially, it was something that, uh, you know, was not easy. 
that was one. And secondly, I uh, had a bad shoulder injury in, in 2010 again. And at that point, just given everything else that was going on, I, I made that decision to, uh, to stop competitive swimming. And uh, a lot of athletes, I think this is something that we definitely should talk about is the transition phase between when you stop competitive swimming and when you start uh, you know, whatever else your, uh, your career um, ambitions are. And a lot of athletes tend to get lost uh, in that transition phase simply because they don't have a base or a backup plan. And so that's where I feel education, you know, is the, is the biggest benefit because if you have that base, you, that transition period just becomes shorter. And as athletes, we're so used to doing uh, things you know 10 hours a day and now suddenly there's this vacuum that's created in your life and you're unsure of who you are you're not no longer a competitive athlete your body feels different you're used to being this you know supremely fit being and then now you slowly wake up every morning and the clothes don't fit and it's it's you know it it, it impacts you mentally and a lot of people don't talk about it but that transition phase is hard it's hard uh, for any athlete and especially if you've competed at an international level I think it's a lot harder um, so uh yeah so i i like i said i was already studying at the time i was doing my second master so i knew what my career ambitions were uh, outside of the pool and so i chose to stop swimming and just kind of jump onto that that wagon pretty quick and i think this is the last question uh and it's for all three of you so the question is uh, badminton has its gopi chan do you think swimming also needs a godfather sort of a person I think every sport needs, you know, like, and even not every, not necessarily sport, like every industry, like you, there's one person that, you know, almost paves the way for everyone else. And it's, it's always helpful because the minute you see someone else doing something, you automatically believe that that's possible. And then that's something you want to emulate. So, uh, you know, think about tennis, like you have enough tennis players that have done yeah. extremely well. And now tennis has become popular. Same with badminton, same with, uh, you know, like boxing and, and sports like that. So, I think uh, swimming definitely would benefit from one of those, and uh, yeah, and I think I think more, more kids into the sport as well. Yeah, I think uh, the person who's gonna get the A cut is gonna have uh, have yeah. the biggest impact. I mean, Hari is the closest right now, so yeah. we all are we all are there. Yep. So I think he's gonna have the biggest impact, he or she. Yeah, like uh, how I said earlier, whoever. Uh, does the A card and also what happened with badminton is uh, Gopichand and uh, Prakash Patakon both won the All England Championship back in the 80s, 90s. And then there was a huge, uh, there was a long gap, there's a void in badminton. There weren't really any great performances until Gopichand came back. Like Gopichand was involved with Sayana's medal in uh, 2012 and also Sindhu's medal in 2016. And that's when again badminton started changing. I could say. Uh, Saina, Sindhu and Gopichand uh, have changed the way the public and the government views badminton and, and uh, like how Likit said as well and how, uh, that A qualifying or maybe a medal in the uh, m multiple medals in the Asian Games maybe some medals in the Commonwealth Games any major international games I think should do, it, do that for swimming and uh, just like how Shikha said as well uh, all sports uh, need someone like Gopichand yeah, so I think, you know, this was a really wonderful session and, you know, it has helped a lot of the people who wanted to know a lot of things by attending this session. So, yeah, I would like to thank all the panelists and the members of the media who are part of this session and, of course, the participants. And, uh, you know, if you want to know any queries about the sports school, you can just uh, uh, jump into www.thesportschool.com. So, yeah, now I would like Srihari, uh, Shika and uh, Likit to, you know, share a few words. Who wants to go? <laughs> you can go. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, wrapping up, just thank you to everyone who attended, uh, you know, took your time out. And I think we've been on this call for like an hour and a half now. So, yep. you know, really appreciate the, the questions, the discussions, and hopefully... You know, this uh, changes how, you know, people think about education and, and sport and they really do go hand in hand. So uh, happy to be, you know, involved with initiatives like the, the sports school. So and you know, happy to have more discussions like this because I think they're 
uh, then they're needed and we need to have ongoing discussions it's yeah. not just you know an annual thing that you talk about because everyone's at home and has nothing else to do <laughs> So again thank you thank you for the opportunity and uh, you know it, it was i i definitely enjoyed it okay um so all of you have been really wonderful the participants yeah. and uh, and me of course and shiri of course <laughs> and i've learned a lot from uh, shika ma'am <laughs> and <laughs> that i think that was one of the one of the requests i had earlier yeah, yeah, yeah. okay i i i myself have learned a lot from shika and i i'm really happy about uh, the way you spoke uh, shika and uh, i'm like to be honest i'm feeling a lot much more motivated after speaking to you like i have never had a conversation with you before or actually i have never seen you before that is true so yeah <laughs> and it was really wonderful and and thank you sports school again for this wonderful opportunity and to everyone stay happy that's all i have to say peace out <laughs> yeah this is a really good uh, session i would like to thank the sports school uh, little it was really good shika was really inf- informative uh, yeah i've seen shika before but i don't remember it i was tiny uh, yeah uh, what i would like uh, the best what i loved uh, about this session was um, like when she spoke about uh, athletes in india needing to be educated about uh, doping and uh, with the uh, substances and not only substances how the process works and everything but it's not only that uh, that's not the only thing that we should uh, focus on there's so much more that all athletes should learn even when they're uh, in their career in sessions like this uh, does help an uh, does help an athlete uh, learn about the sport learn about the seniors that uh, swam before them and uh, I, i always think of it this way uh, the best swimmers are always the smartest swimmers and that's because we know about the sport how the sport works and things like that and sessions like this uh, can help us a lot when it go uh, in our career so it was great and i would like to thank the sports school once again so thank you everyone for your precious time and see you all soon